allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We welcome everyone on today's October 19th General Republic. Missouri? Here. Wayland? Here. 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 Meyer? Here. Charles? Here. We have the minutes of the September 21st meeting. Were there any changes? Um, can I just make a comment about that? At our last meeting, we voted on the touch-free doors, and I voted no. And I just wanted to clarify that it wasn't to the doors. I'm very happy with that, and I'm an advocate for that. However, it was to the process, because we only got one bid. That's all I have. Any changes to the minutes? That is there a motion? Make a motion. Is a motion made? Is there a second? Second. Is there a second? Any questions? Roll call. Assertive? Yes. Wayland? Yes. Yes. Fire? Yes. Yes. Anyone from the audience wish to address the board? Yeah, we have the course report. Sorry. Uh, the clerk's report. For the month of September 2020, totals $563,621.41. And I just wanted to remind um, everyone that election packets for the April 6, 2021 consolidated election are available here at the Village Hall, and information is available on the Village website. The president, Village President, and three trustee positions are up uh, for election to four-year terms, and one trustee position will be available for a two-year unexpired term. So anybody with any questions can contact me at the Village Hall. The filing dates are December 14th through 21st. That's it? Yeah. Okay, I have uh, some good news tonight. I'd like to uh, entertain the motion of approving a uh, venue session to complete the term of former trustee, Trustee Basil. It would be up until April. Someone would like to make that motion. So moved. Motion made. Second. And there is a second to that motion. Any questions? Can I ask a question? Sure. Okay. First of all, Ben, I'm happy to have you aboard. I'm in, I'm excited to work with you. I'm just curious when it comes up to something like this, do we ever offer it to the village before just appointing somebody? We if haven't. anyone is interested as far as residents. Yes. Okay, did we do that? We didn't announce it, no. Any other questions? Roll call. Proust? Yes. Fire? Yes. <clears throat> Kaparos? Yes. Wheeling? Yes. Missouri? Yes. Okay, and then clerk, would you like to swear in? I'm going to kind of do it over here so I don't know if you guys want to park the waters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right over here. But not too close to me. Oh, we can go up there. Solemnly swear or affirm. To hereby solemnly swear or affirm. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And I will faithfully discharge the duties. And I will faithfully discharge the duties. Of the Office of Village Trustee to the best of my ability. Of the Office of Village Trustee to the best of my ability. Okay, you're good to go. Huh? I don't know if we're supposed to shake hands. <laughs> Yeah, it's very good for you, sir. Right here. Right here. 
<laughs> this time I won't knock it over. <laughs> okay, with that before you, in case you didn't see it in your pile, there's some committee appointments in front of you. Welcome. Um, I would like to read them. Oh, no. President Pro Tem, this is Scott Wheeling. Finance and Administration, we trustee Caporis and Marcy Meyer. Public Safety Committee is Todd Krauss and Scott Whaling. Public Works Committee would be Marcy Meyer and Jonathan Kaporis. Economic Development and Community Relations Committee would be Ben Ucession and Stacey Mazur. Public Buildings, Park, Properties, Parks and Recreation would be Trustee Whaling and Trustee Krauss. And Planning, Building and Zoning Committee would be Trustee Mazur and Trustee Ucession. I think it's the first time I called you Trustee, so. With that, would someone like to make a motion uh, supporting those points? So Motion made for a second. Second. There's a second. Roll call. Missouri? Yes. Hughesession? Yes. Whaling? Yes. Kuros? Yes. Meyer? Yes. Kuros? Yes. We have good news with bad news with the quiet zone. We believe we're at the end of the uh, long awaited journey. We have paid our fees. We've submitted all signed documents. The railroad acknowledged the documents, and then the gentleman that was handling it decided to go on paternity leave. So once again, we're sitting and waiting, and we believe he's going to be back this Thursday, if I remember you said that. Mm -hmm. So hopefully, maybe Friday, we would have the, everything to go. Uh, if you haven't noticed, we already did the work on the driveway at the uh, FS Granger. So that's already done. So we're trying to do and Matt's trying to do whatever we can right now without actually getting on the railroad property and so on and so forth. Uh, COVID update, uh, if you haven't been paying attention to the news, our numbers are up. In fact, tomorrow I believe would be a, possibly, I hope not, the third stage straight of going over the U.S. at 8.5 or 8%. Uh, I received an email after the governor's uh, press conference today saying most likely we would be placed on mitigation starting sometime this week. I just don't know why I don't know the details. Uh, with that, Village Hall is back open again. Uh, public works is back to work again. And once again, I stress every single meeting, and I'll stress it again today, that it's more important than ever to wear the mask mm -hmm. and then follow all the rules as far as social distancing and sanitizing and so on and so forth. And with that, I go on to Finance Administration. Mm -hmm. Trustee Byron. Um, Treasurer's report, Donna. All right. Uh, the September month end balance for the village accounts two million nine hundred sixty four thousand two hundred fifty three dollars thirty three cents. The month end balance for the commission accounts one hundred forty eight thousand seven hundred eighty eight dollars thirty one cents. The total of all together three million one hundred thirteen thousand forty one dollars sixty four cents. The month end balance in general, $986,444.38. The September Commission non AP payments, total of $261,801.93. Little higher than normal, we had three payrolls in the month of September. <clears throat> Also, I just wanted to point out, I gave you an updated credit card usage report. Um, I also included a billing statement uh, showing what we pay at this point, the different percentages. We talked about it at the last meeting, depending on what type of visa you use, so forth and so on. So it's just a breakdown of that. Um, if there aren't any questions, that would end my report. Okay. I'd like to make a motion for the treasurer's report for September. Motion on the floor. Is there a second? Sure. Is there a second? Any questions? Roll call. Krauss? Yes. Meyer? Yes. Kaprose? Yes. Whaling? Yes. Possession? I'll abstain on this one. Abstain? I'm just going to abstain since I have a okay. Okay. joint. Sorry, the masks kind of muffle things. <laughs> Is there a, yes. Uh, variance reports uh, for last month are included. Um, and for bills, we've got the updated, updated bills are attached. Um, there's some extras that were not on the bills that you saw brought previously. Um, $2,088 to Alexander Chemical. 
$349.25 for Corn, Maine, $180 for East Jordan, Ironwood, $130.40, oops, I meant $39.11 for two NICOR bills, $130.46 for NICOR, $54.57 for NICOR, uh, $147.16 petty cash, and $5,000 for stamps for auditing fees. That looks like about it. Um, so I'd like to make a motion uh, approving $412,956.44 for a September bill. Motion on the floor, is there a second? Second. Is second? Any questions? Point of question. Point of order that uh, it's our first step payment on the new sewer plan. Is it included in this bill? Any other questions or comments? Roll call. Missouri? Yes. Few sessions? Abstain. Whaley? Yes. Capros? Yes. Fire? Yes. Gross? Yes. Um, and then we have the audit in front of us and the findings of the auditor for the year ending April 30th. And other, Nick, I don't want to screw up your last name. What? Baba. Baba. All right. Looked easy enough, but you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Wherever you feel Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Nick Baba. I am a senior audit manager with Sitditch and the senior audit manager assigned to the Villages Audit. Anthony Servini is the partner in the engagement. He spoke at the presentation for the 2019 audit last year. Unfortunately, due to a prior commitment, he cannot be here tonight. So I'm Ken Shitting, and I'm here to present the results of the Villages Audit as of April 30th, 2020. So ultimately in front of you tonight, we issue, we issue two reports. There's a third report that isn't in here. It's the uh, electronic annual controllers filing. That's just an electronic submission. But the two reports in front of you tonight are the annual finance report. That's the larger of the documents. And then the second is the auditor's communication to the village board. I'll highlight a few items out of both, but at the end of the presentation, I'd be happy to answer any questions that the board might have as part of, uh, as part of the audit. So if you're following along tonight, starting in the annual finance report, I'd like to direct your attention to pages 1, 2, and 3. <coughs> pages 1, 2, and 3 are the independent auditor's report pages. These are the three most important pages in the village's report in that they document the auditor's opinion on the village's financial statements. The pages before this and the pages after page three are ultimately the village management's responsibility for the fair preparation and presentation of the village's financial statements. And that was, that's what that second paragraph documents, that it's ultimately management's responsibility for the preparation and fair presentation of these financial statements. And they are built and prepared in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. The next paragraph documents our responsibility as the village auditors which is ultimately to express an opinion on these financial statements based on audit procedures and audit tests. Those are guidelines through the generally accepted auditing standards, the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants, and then we also ensure that the village's financial statements are in accordance and consistent with the Governmental Accounting Standards Board, also known as GASB. Shifting to page number two, the top of page number two, documents the opinion, and based on our testing procedures and our results, we. In our opinion, the basic financial statements tonight present fairly in all material respects the village's governmental activities, business type activities, each major fund, and the aggregate remaining fund information of the village of future as of April 30, 2020. So, this is what's referred to as an unmodified opinion. It's a quote unquote clean opinion. It's ultimately the highest level of assurance that we as auditors can provide to any local or any, any, any governmental entity in the United States of America. So, this is something we commend the village for obtaining. It's consistently what they have obtained year over year, but I just wanted to highlight that that's an unmodified clean opinion. Moving a few pages ahead, you'll find a section titled the Management's Discussion and Analysis. The Management's Discussion and Analysis is it's nine pages long, and this is a document that's prepared by management and reviewed by us as auditors to ensure that the information is consistent with the financial statements and also consistent with generally accepted accounting principles. I highly recommend that the board read through these nine pages. As we all know, these annual finance reports can be somewhat convoluted, long, a lot of different statements. These nine pages do a great job of documenting and analyzing the change from 2019 to 2020. Management has an opportunity to provide context in terms of what has happened in 2019 and compare that to what has happened in 2020. So I really recommend if, you have, if, you, if you're going to focus on one section before we get the numbers, this is a great place to start. After the management's discussion and analysis, you'll find the first set of basic financial statements, pages 6, 7, 8, and 9. I won't highlight the numbers on these pages. I just wanted to, to 
inform the board that these these four pages are the what are referred to as the government-wide financial statements for the village. They're titled the statement of net position and then the statement of activities. These are the long-term perspective financial statements for the village in that they include all of the, the long-term activity and give the user or the reader a, a more long-term perspective approach. All of the other statements throughout the Elk Harbor Sec are more on the current and short-term approach. So these four pages capture all of the village's capital assets, long-term debt, the bonds that are outstanding, the IEPA loans that are outstanding, the pension liability for the Illinois Municipal Retirement Fund, things of that nature that are ultimately required by GASB, the Governmental Accounting Standards Board, in order to ensure that these financial statements are up to the unmodified opinion that I discussed earlier. Shifting into the fund financial statement section on page 10. The bottom of page 10 is the, the page 10 in and of itself is the balance sheet for the governmental funds. And this is the beginning of the financial statements that are presented on a more fund by fund basis. These statements are recorded on what we refer to as the current resources measurement focus, otherwise known as a modified accrual basis of accounting. So these are more of a, of a short-term approach financial statement in that they give the, the reader uh, an outlook on each fund from a cash position, from uh, an accounts receivable position, what can be collected within one year, or what, what can be paid from a payable standpoint within one year. If we look at the general fund column, I want to just highlight the unassigned fund balance down at the almost the, the bottom left of the page. You'll note that that's $508,000. This is a good figure to look at and compare to current year expenditures in that you want to analyze and evaluate the overall reserve within the fund balance from an unrestricted, unassigned fund balance amount. Overall, comparing this 508000 to the expenditures for the general fund in the current year of about $2.5 million, this reserves at about 20%, which is, comparatively speaking to other municipalities in Illinois, a great benchmark to, to go for. 20 25% is what we usually see. So. Uh, overall, I just wanted to highlight that and mention that from a you know, fiscal responsibility standpoint, especially in today's day and age with the uncertainty of revenue streams and, and going on, what's going on in the world today. So, um, The next section I just want to highlight real quick is the bottom of page 12. The bottom of page 12 compiles all of the income statement activity for the governmental funds on that same current resources approach that I discussed earlier. Overall, there was a positive change in fund balance of about 42000 Changing the beginning fund balance from 1.23 million to a ending fund balance for the year of about 1.27 million. So overall, a break-even year, but this captures all of the village's fund: the general fund, the motor fuel tax fund, capital projects, debt service funds, things of that nature. On the on page 15, page 15 captures the enterprise fund, so the village's water and sewer fund, the refuse fund. Overall, when we look at the change in net position for those two funds, the refuse fund operated at a, a, a break-even year, just uh, just a little bit over two thousand dollars. And comparatively speaking to two thousand nineteen, a lot of the you know, a lot of the activity is very comparable to two thousand nineteen. For the water and sewer fund, there was a small change in net position, a decrease of about three hundred fifty-six thousand. Looking and peeling back the layers on that, uh, uh, the, the primary reasons are a an interest payment on the new IAPA loan that was about hundred thousand dollars. This was the first year that that interest payment was made. There was also an additional, compared to last year, $80,000 transferred out to other funds that resulted in $100,000 in a net transfer out. And then lastly, utility sales was, just took a dip of about $100,000. So overall, when you kind of peel back layers on that, there's, those are the three primary contributors to the decrease of about $356,000 during the fiscal year. The last section, thank you for bearing with me tonight, is the page 42 and 43. Page 42 and 43 I just wanted to, to highlight with you all tonight. This is the two required statements for the village's participation in their pension plan, the Illinois Municipal Retirement Fund. Uh, page 42 just documents the overall contributions that the village is required to make year over year over the last five years. From a background standpoint, IMRF works in that each employee that participates in the plan is required to contribute 4.5% every paycheck. Every year, an actuary determines a contribution rate that the employer, in, the, in this case the village, is required to contribute on a monthly basis. That mixed with the employee contribution really contributes to the fact that that's such a well-funded plan. So overall, this just documents the contributions that are made year over year for the village. The next page documents the actuarially determined pension liability. 
So over the last five years, you can see the change in, in that pension liability. This was most recently measured as of December 31st, 2019. On the on the middle right of the page, on the far right, you'll see that the current net pension liability for the village is just around $88,000 and a rather large increase from last year, about $705,000. So that leaves the village overall funding at a 99% rate for what is actually actually determined for their participation within IMRF. So that's a very healthy funded status for the plan. And year over year, for the last five years, it hasn't dipped below 84%. As we know, as actuarial assumptions change, as the market shifts, as the economy shifts, these do tend to, to move up and down with that, but overall, big picture, it's a very healthy funded status for the village. Last thing, I did, as we shift to the, to the uh, other report, the auditor's communication with the village board. we include, this is a required communication, what's included in here are all of the audit adjustments as well as any formal recommendations that, that we have evaluated as part of our, our testing and evaluation of internal controls. Comparing to 2019, the village has done a fantastic job of working through those implementations and implementing those, uh, those recommendations. Um, a deficiency, which is the highest level of formal recommendations in this letter, is the lowest level of essential recommendations that we can make as auditors, and the deficiency is defined as, an, as when <coughs> an, an internal controls exist when a design or operation of the control does not allow management or employees in the normal course of performing their assigned functions to prevent or detect and correct misstatements on a timely basis. Overall, these are considered very low-level deficiencies, and when we look at what, was, what occurred in 2018, or I'm sorry, 2020, the only new deficiency that was identified was a uh, really just a kind of a formalized issue with a collateral agreement with the bank. And coincidentally, after these were finalized and before tonight, we were able to smooth out the issue. So this will be considered implemented for the next fiscal year. So that was that was a good piece of news between the final reports and then the uh, the presentation here tonight. But um, you know, with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions that the board might have on this or the annual finance report. And uh, lastly, I just would like to thank. Uh, Bob, Jeanette, and Donna for their, their help throughout the audit this year. I know that this year was a, a very unique process because we had to essentially function remotely. And um, you know, it, it, it's a long process, and I, I just want to say thanks from Anthony, myself, and the engagement team to, to them for all of their help to, to get us where we are and to present and then file the reports on time. So thank you for having me here tonight, and uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions. I'd like to make a motion accepting the audit and findings of our auditor for the year ended April 30th, 2020. Motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. There is a second. Any questions? Roll call. Krauss? Yes. Meyer? Yes. Kaparos? Yes. Wayling? Yes. Possession? Absent. Missouri? Yes. Uh, discussion on tax levy for 2020, collectible in 2021. We typically pass the tax levy at the November meeting, so it's time once again to discuss what to do. For seven years, we froze the levies, but last year we increased the overall levy by 1.8% and pledged this increase to the police protection tax levy. This year we're being told the cost of living will be one point, adjustment will be 1.5% and levy, this would increase the total levy by $9,243.54. We would increase the police protection levy by this amount and pledge the amount to the increasing cost of operating the police department. Or we could freeze all the levies or do something in between zero and one and a half percent. In fiscal year 1920, police expenses were $65,666.74, higher than they were in fiscal year 1819. Yeah, my glasses are steaming up. This year, the budget for police expenses is $92,000. $896.61 more than what was actually spent in fiscal year 1920. Discussion? Thoughts? Any? <laughs> so if we freeze the levy, what does that look like? What, what, what does it look like? What, what type of a financial issue will that make if we freeze it? It's $9,200. 
plus or minus. So if you freeze the levy, there's $9,200 less to spend. So if we freeze it, we keep it, we're, we're levying, levying the same dollars as we have last year. Last year we increased it to 1.8. We froze it seven years prior. Seven years in a row, we never levied for an additional dollar more than we did, going back to 2011. Right. Okay. Now what he's asking is, is because we did that last year with police. Police, we were having an issue with uh, a lot of break-ins and everything at the time. The gas station, numerous other things going on in town. We it's said more manpower. We said we'll we'll increase the levy by 1.8, and we, we pledged it all to go directly towards police protection. So what he's asking is, as a village board, do we want to do that again? They estimate that cola, which no matter what we levy, we could levy 5%. We could say we want a 20% increase. Cola is going to dictate what we get. So they're estimating that to be at approximately 1.5%. So no matter what you ask for, you're probably not going to get any more than 1.5%. So do we want to ask for 1.5%? And based on that, we would generate approximately an additional $9,243, which would be in general fund, which would then be pledged strictly to police protection like we did last year. Or do we want to say, no, we're going to freeze taxes, we're not raising taxes, we're not increasing the levy? Uh, would you pick a source of budget? Would you figure this increase? Well, we haven't started the budget process for next year yet because you levy this year to collect next year. Um, in the grand scheme of things, $9,200 is not going to make or break a budget. But if you levy the extra $9,200 and pledge that for police protection, the residents can be rest assured that we're using it for that purpose. And I don't have a recommendation for you either way. I will live with whatever you decide. But $9,200 in a Two and a half million dollar general fund budget is not going to, you know, lay people off or anything like that. It, it could be there's a minor expense you can't do, but we always make it work. And as Trustee Petro said, for seven years we made it work with a freeze. So I, I'm not recommending one way or the other. It's a, it's a. Last year we struggled with this one, and we decided to raise it 1.8 and give it to the police department. And as you can see. 1.8 probably raised about 10 grand, and we still spent 92,000 more in the in the police department. So that money has to come from somewhere. And and also that, that okay. So here's where we you have our um to compare it the 9,200 and the 2.5 million dollar budget. I don't think is accurate. Is an accurate representation because of the fact that that's we're not levying. Two point five million dollars. Correct. Correct. Our yeah, levy is our, our levy is approximately six hundred and sixty. The operating levy is six hundred and twenty. Yeah. Six hundred twenty thousand. So, in in that aspect of it, I think it's a big difference when you state it like that. So, I I still I mean, my opinion is is uh, I've always been a big proponent and been against increasing the levy and uh, last year trustee trustee Krause gave us um, some good reasons and some quality reasons as to why it would be advantageous for us to do it so um, I, I'm gonna go off of the recommendation if this is going to go directly towards the police in, in that aspect of the general fund, uh, I'd like to hear a recommendation from the Public Safety Committee in, in, as to where they'd like to see it and, and, and use it and if, if they feel they need it and if they do. And, and that's why I brought it up now because we have two months yet. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know. um, and I will. Don't mean to put you on the spot there. No, <laughs> I, will, I will put it on your lap. Um, no, I will get with the chief. Um, I'll call a public safety meeting, we can go over the numbers. I know last year we just got crushed in the summer between burglaries, robberies, uh, gun. I mean, it was just, it was a busy summer, so we needed it last summer. I believe uh, this summer is calmer. I know we went in spurts where there was 
like a week or two where we get hit with a bunch of stuff or stuff would be right around us. So I know we beef up patrols um, because something was right neighborhood next to us or something like that. Um, but I would like to look at the actual numbers to see if it was used this year, where we used it, um, and if the chief still thinks we need it with what's going on. And this board has always taken the levying of taxes very seriously. Absolutely. We've always taken more than one meeting to discuss what we're going to do. So that's why I bring it up early. I will do my due diligence and the public safety committee will get back. Sounds good. Um, consider a resolution changing the way employees receive workers' comp benefits. This resolution would change the policy of the village paying 100% of the employee's salary and then retaining the workers' comp checks. Since the workers' compensation only provides 70% of the employees paid, the village does not recover its 30%. But the 70% the employee would receive from workers' compensation is not taxable income, so the net paid to the employee is about the same. This policy would become effective upon passage for any new cases and not affect the one case we have outstanding. This change makes sense for longer-term disabilities that we've been seeing in the past few years. I, so this this came up because it's something that uh, I brought up to Bob. Um, I, I just think it's right. It, whatever it's been past practice, we've never we had one last summer and I kind of questioned it. Um, and then it it's one of those things that just kind of we discussed it and the pros and cons of doing it this way. Um, one of the problems is whenever you have a situation like this and you're uh, I believe we're fortunate in the fact that we have numerous employees that have been here such long amounts of time, but one of the disadvantages to that is you get stuck in the past practices and it becomes very difficult to change things of the way they were done 25 years ago. Um, so th this is just something I brought up. I, I think it's the easiest way. Um, that one, I think it saves us a lot of paperwork and headaches of us having to file with the comp claim that, that, that takes it directly between the employer and the insurance company, leaves us out of the middle of it, um, and, 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 and that's that. Um, there are issues with the village of the recover 30%, I, you know, semantics, but not all of that is out of our pocket that's, you're talking with holdings that the employee is making um, that they don't have to because that it is untaxable income. So. Um, at the end of the day, it, it, it's basically a wash for the employee. Nothing will change. They'll still receive their, their pay. They'll receive 70% of it, but they're not paying uh, income tax on, on that income uh, that they're on it. And I think at some point, when we got uh, a case right now uh, outstanding, uh, that, that wouldn't affect that. But I think at some point, you just got to say, okay, this is the way it is. We're going to change it. And whether it was past practice or not. Some we point, actually found got to be the first on the new. So. It's in the personnel manual, John, which means the only way we can change it is by motion of this board. Yeah. So it wasn't right. Yeah. Which surprised me. I thought it was just a practice, but it was actually in the manual. Yeah. So that's why we brought it to your attention here. Twenty twenty seventeen. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else have any input? I'd like to make a motion. Uh, to adopt resolution number 2020-17, changing the way employees receive workers' compensation benefits. Motion on the floor, is there a second? Okay. Is there any questions? Roll call. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Reilly? Yes. 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 That ends my report. And you did a wonderful job of stepping in for Trustee Basil. <laughs> <laughs> Public Buildings and Properties Park and Recreation Committee, Trustee Basil. Okay, Centennial time capsule wasn't really discovered. I think we all knew it was there. It was just... Uh, <laughs> you were around in 1970. I was there. I was there. So I can tell you that it was put in there. But, you know, since the firemen uh, had to move their parking lot and driveways and everything else, this time capsule was inside a brick, you know, flagpoles and monuments, basically, and um, that was moved, and the time capsule was obviously in there, 
was not underground, it was just inside of that brick enclosure. Well, over time, you know, it's, it's gotten, you know, moisture and everything else in there. And the firemen were, were good enough to take it in. And uh, it was in, has it been moved? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So thank you very much for, for allowing us to keep that time capsule in your bay. Of course. When we went over there to look at the time capsule, I'm expecting this time capsule to be, you know, something this big. Of course, that many years ago I was small, so I thought, but when I saw it, it's huge. It is huge, and it, it weighs a lot. And um, one thing, you know, this, this basically says that we will preserve it at the depot. I don't think it's something that can even fit into the depot. Uh, in fact, the depot might raise up on one side because that's how heavy it is. You have hardwood floors in there. You have everything else. So what we were thinking about doing is, you know, we're putting in that nice parking lot across the street next to the post office. I figure we could set up some type of a enclosure there, maybe with, with a plaque or something else, to preserve it for another 50 years. That capsule was, was put there, and it was to be opened 100 years from now, or from then, so 50 years from now. Uh, so that's one thing that I wanted to propose. Instead of moving it into the depot, which it will never go, I mean, it's... Jeanette was there, you know, Joe, I mean, you guys know how big it was. I mean, it's, it's a full, and it's hundreds of pounds, and there's no way it's going to fit into the depot, and it has to be preserved in its current state, you know, for the next 50 years. So I don't want to sit there and condense it or, you know, do whatever. It was put in here to be preserved for 100 years. So I thought we could do something and, and rededicate right across the street from where it was put in 50 years ago, maybe on that corner and kind of work something out there to kind of landscape and, and everything else. So, you know, that's kind of what, what I was thinking about. What do you guys feel about that approach? Didn't we, when we laid out that parking lot, I mean, first we, first we got to evict the fire department. Once we evict the fire department, <laughs> Didn't we, when we laid out the, uh, the parking lot of the parking space, there was one corner there where we sort of... I want to say there's a grassy corner. Yeah, 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 you, can't park, you, you, you can't park cars unless you have a, a right angle corner. That'd be at the corner of Maxwell. Country. Right. So I think it would be a perfect location for something like that. You know, it's gonna, it's visible. It's, it's something that's there. And 50 years from now, I don't know if they... Well, some of you might still be there. But look at me. <laughs> Not me. I was there for the first 50. I don't know if I'll be there for the second 50. But, um, but that's kind of what we're doing, or thinking about. So um, if I get a favorable nod on, on something like that, we'll work something out to try to get it. In the meantime, it's going to have to sit in the maintenance building. Yeah, we got it down at the sewer plant. It's out of sight, out of mind. So none of our guys will open it up to be nosy. <laughs> okay. All right. I like it. I like the idea. Okay. All right. So we'll go with that. Did you think about any of the park space by the depot? Dealers are doing tying it into that area somewhere. We could, the but depot. there's so much going on. Just there. More, okay. Right. I just cool. thought because we're going to landscape that area anyway over at the parking lot. So. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Okay. That's your gig. Absolutely. All right. <clears throat> Okay, my next item, uh, representatives of the Dis Fire District wish to address the Village Board regarding the future of Fireman's Parking Lot in reference to an intergovernmental agreement um, regarding the future agreement which was approved for the donation of the parkland to the Village in 2002. This agreement was approved so the Village could accept a donation of land from the volunteer fire department. However, the specifics regarding the cost sharing of the parking lot were never finalized since the village hall board at that time was not a party to the agreement and had no funding for that improvements. That was back in 2002. 
Since that time, both the village and the fire district have spent funds to maintain the facility. Uh, actions on this matter are at the discretion, but I'm going to turn it over. You guys can make your presentation as far as what, what you're talking about. Okay. Um, thank you for taking time for us tonight. I'm Marty Cook, President and Board of Trustees of Beecher Fire Protection District. We did bring some materials um, tonight. And um, Scott, you referred back to an agreement, um, which we're providing a copy of it to you. Of that agreement between the Village Beecher Fire Protection District and uh, on page five, or item number five under that agreement, it says that an intergovernmental agreement shall be negotiated between the Village Teacher Fire Protection District and the Washington Township Building Commission for the maintenance and the making of any necessary improvements to the parking lot area located where it is. This agreement shall allow for public use of the parking facilities with the exception of some designated fire or fire parking areas and shall require each of the three governing bodies to contribute one third towards any required maintenance and improvement of the parking lot. We've always kind of gone with that agreement, uh, taking it as it was signed at the time by the, the uh, Paul Owen, who was the president of the Village of Beecher, uh, the president of the Beecher Volunteer Fire Department at the time of, of that signed agreement. So um, that always hasn't been upheld, though, because when we had the parking lot seal coded in 2016 at the cost of $13,650. Um, the fire department paid for that entire cost to be able to get it done in a timely manner. They were never reimbursed for any of the costs by ever any of the other entities. So now, as we move on with our construction, our, our remodel of our station, we're hoping to get this done before the asphalt plant shut down for the year, which is very quickly approaching. So uh, we had set aside in our budget for the state remodel $40,000 for repairs to the parking lot. Well, as our, our uh, contractor, contractor has come out, as they have looked over that parking lot, they've uh, gone through it in great detail with us and pointed out that that the base on the back of, the, of that parking lot was very poorly laid originally, which contributed to um, its deterioration quicker than it would have if it had been a better base. So the cost to um, remove and replace the existing lot, and you also have in front of you a quote from New York and Cable, um, is $134,106. That does not include the $40,000 that the fire department budgeted for repairs to the parking lot that we still have in our budget for that part. So dividing that three ways per this agreement um, would come to $44,702 per entity. This new parking lot as it's configured um, now would uh, have 60 parking spaces. So technically 10 of those belong to the community center, um, three handicapped, seven regular spaces, which leaves 50, which kind of gets divided then between the village and the fire district. Fire district has how many designated spaces, Chief? 10? 10? 10 to 11, I don't know. 10 to 11 designated spaces. Now this park is used by, besides the fire district, it's used by the community center anytime they have an event. When they have craft shows, when the high school has plays, when they rent out the building, when the Chamber of Commerce has their meetings there and uses it for their, their monthly meetings, when the Lions Club has events, Fourth of July Commission. It truly is a community parking lot. So for the fire district to bear the cost of paying for this entire parking lot um, redo at this time would really put a, um, would cause a hardship for us at this time in this portion of our model. And it would force us to look for some alternate solutions for resurfacing the parking lot. So that's where we stand. Um, we appreciate you taking the time and, and hope that you would consider um, contributing to that um, portion of, of repairs for the parking lot. 
we're hoping to get this done this year. So we've only got a short amount of time before the asphalt plant closed down for the year and we can have it done. So again, um, Chief, do you have anything you want to ask about? Sure. Um, if you folks could look at the map um, that was provided, anything that is shaded in gray, um, as President Cook um, discussed, we had $43,000 worth of repairs that were budgeted and bid out for the project. Um, for repairing, we we're adding the spots all the way on the north end by the, by the baseball fields as additional parking because of everything that we um, intruded into the existing parking lot. So anything shaded in gray is it? That is what is focused in that forty-three thousand um, dollars. This would be a complete tear out and resurface um, installation of, a, of the pavement material. Once they started saw cutting and, and digging down, when they were um, taking the material out, they realized that there wasn't a base on there. It was tar and chip um, from thirty-five years ago. So the fact that we got I don't know, 35 years of out of this parking lot is nothing short of a miracle with no base behind it. But um, we're just we're looking for for some assistance here. And, uh, if you have any questions, please feel free. Um, you know the the shaded area in the red or orange. Yes. Now that shows the entire back and also the the alleyway. Yes. Over there. Now the village, this agreement only pertains to the parking lot, correct? Um, I think what I wasn't on I wasn't on the uh, the volunteer uh, fire association, but Trustee Waterman might be able to to help with that. But I believe it included everything. When everything is included in the parking lot, it's the stuff behind the station as well. Correct me. But no, you're right. You're on. It was considered parking lot, which from the church to the north to the ball field all the way to the community hall's property, that's all considered parking lot. Do you know why many, many years ago uh, the agreement was done the way it was done rather than just simply saying since it's such a community parking lot that the parking lot maybe would have or should have been given to the village? And then designate your fireman parking spaces there as opposed to this agreement the way it's done. Do you have any idea why we did it that way back then? Honestly, no, I don't. Um, I, I believe the park was the fire department's oh, parking lot was the fire districts. Is that correct? The park was owned by the volunteers, the parking lot was owned by the district. Okay, and that's when the carnival was being run, the pancakes were being done once a month. So we utilized that parking lot for everything we were doing, like I said, the carnival, everything else. So that's that that's how that was back in the day. So you were sort of preserving your rights per se if you want to call it that. What what is so in here it talks about lots seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Those are um, years ago the park wasn't um, one giant park. It was individual parcels. Subdivided. Yeah. And it was subdivided, and now it's just one giant parcel of land. It shows up on a Sidwell. You know, that that was platted. I think even where your building's sitting right now, that was platted and um, locked. Yes. And I yes. think there's, there's lots all the way from Penfield all the way to Miller Street. And when they pertain to those lots, it, it you know, if you look at the Sidwell map, you know, you can tell where the building is and, and everything else. But everything else, I mean, there were probably 15, 20 lots that are, were, are in the park. I don't have a copy of that. I, well, I, so I mean, I guess yeah. mine. Yeah. yeah. But that kind of shows you, I just highlighted kind of where the, the um, lots are. And that kind of shows you because that's the old plan. And I don't know why, Bob, I, I did a, um, on the uh, village map as well, and the village map um, doesn't appear to have those lots in there. But the old, the current Sidwell maps through the county still show each one of those lots. And I think those lots were 
Yeah, I can't tell you if that's been re-subdivided or not. Yeah, but those yeah. lots were obviously vacated. Um, yeah, because even Hodges Street ran through there one time. We had to vacate right. Hodges Street. Right, and then it's vacated. Yeah. But, you know, it, you can see it on that city wall now. Go, going back in history, when, when the fire district was that's formed... That's basically where the T-Mall field is. No. It's, it's the, you know where the alley is that runs right past, between the preschool or the church and the fire? Mm -hmm. That's the alley, okay? So that would go up between those two, all the way up to Miller Street. Would it be the telephone line? Telephone be power telephone line. Line. Telephone. I'm looking at a different sound. And see that alley would go right behind all those homes that are at front on Woodward Street. Mm -hmm. And years ago, they were all platted as lots. That's why you get your lot numbers. Yeah, they, they were owned by Antonia Warner, if I remember right. Correct? And she I, donated those to the Fire Association. Yeah, I think that was before my time. Yeah, I remember the old. And then when the fire district was created, it wanted to build a fire station because the fire department is lo was located where the police department is now on village property. So the fire association, correct me if I'm wrong, Mike, because you and I are probably well, the oldest ones that can go back on this. The fire association gave that property to the fire district so they could build the fire station and issue bonds. Yeah, they didn't that, that was that was nothing but was just a blank parking lot for, for right. many, many years. It was P Grail. Yep. Nineteen eighty two I think the station was built. Eighty six. Eighty six. Okay. And they needed to do bonds but they had to own the property in order to build it. So the association Donated that land to the district. So we found the pig ground. Yeah, and then, and then in 2002 or 2000, somewhere in there, the fire department gave up the carnival. And then after they gave up the carnival, they wanted to get rid of the land. They had no need for the land anymore. And that's when the village took the land through that agreement in 2002. And actually, if you look at this diagram, um, it shows up. A black line going down the middle of, of the parking lot off of the entrance on Penfield, right in the middle of the driveway there. That is actually our property line, right in the middle of that driveway. And through the parking lot? Yes. So I was going to say, that's all, um, that other from what I'm seeing here, it looks like... Belongs to the community center. Right. The, right. the other side, well, yeah, this is saying vacated. But it looks like 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 are all your property. Right. Which is that line heading west. Mm -hmm. yeah, technically, the village only has so, right of access to the park off of Miller Street or off the of Because we really don't have any access to the property off of Penfield legally. Mm -hmm. It says here that the village transferred back a certain portion of this land to the Fire Protection District. Which shall include all of lots 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12, correct? Yes. Which is what all the parking lot sits on is lots 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, all your property. No, that's where their building is. No. Scott, if you look at, you mind if I get up and show you something here? So looking at this, right? Mm -hmm. You look at their lot line, which is basically from the center line of Maxwell Street. Right, right. Look at Maxwell Street, right? The center line of Maxwell Street runs. It's basically all the parking lot. The center line of Maxwell Street runs basically through the middle of that parking lot? Well, actually further east of it. It basically right. pretty much the edge of the handicap spot. So right. Yeah, yeah, to yeah. the edge of the yeah. Right. Basically right. that that <coughs> that, that drive right. between the parking spaces to the west. Right. And the handicap spaces for the community, right. you know, for yeah. that lot. That looks like that's your property line. Mm -hmm. So all this is your property, right? Correct. So, but the agreement was for everything other than lots 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, which we gave back to you, right? If you go to, to number 2 in the agreement, now yeah. therefore be it agreed. Right. If you go to look at it, uh, item number five in the agreement. That's kind of what we're looking at there. 
is there an intergovernmental agreement that was negotiated? If there is, nobody can locate it. I think a park commission was formed, but I don't think park the intergovernmental agreement formed. never resulted out of the parks commission, and the parks commission kind of evolved <coughs> over time. Because I remember Doc McKay being on that park commission. Right. And Pat Lane was on it. Well, we did that, remember, for the Oslo. The yes, okay. that grant was set up, there was a committee formed for that. That's when we applied for the grant for the park. And Dr. McKay and, and uh, different ones were on there. Just to give you a little bit of background, too, over the number of years between myself and Bob, we've met the previous administration and discussed this at length, and we had a plan to bring it before the board when we did Penfield. We thought we were going to buy enough time to get to, when we did Penfield, we get to try and get a good bang for the buck, try to get Penfield done, the parking lot, possibly even the paths, and then the two parking lots at uh, the one at uh, Green Street and then the other one by the post office. Um, then obviously uh, Penfield's been put off for quite a while and now the parking lots of the state didn't send, so I'm bringing brought before you much sooner. And then the other question I had would be, is this your current? Uh, that is our that is our current price for that we have uh, solicited. Current, current vendor. Correct. Mm -hmm. um, what I did, I did have a conversation with R.C. Wegman, our construction manager that is managing our project, that if we do come to some sort of agreement amongst the three um, entities, that R.C. Wegman would manage the project if it is handled during the time of the construction at no cost. And they feel that they feel comfortable that they can beat up Matthew Payton enough to get the cost knocked down a little bit. And then one more question: We had a meeting, one meeting that I can recall, where the, the uh, community hall was there. Uh, at that meeting, we decided to go out and just try and get a total price rather than the forty-three thousand dollars to repair it, because we had no idea what we were talking about to replace the entire thing. At that time, the community hall was there, but I don't remember what the community hall. Have they responded in any way or form? Because we always felt, did they or did they not have the money? We don't, we don't know that for a fact. They didn't give us a dollar amount because we didn't really have any figures ourselves yet. But they did agree to contribute something to the project. I don't know how much. And, you know, when you look at the whole picture of things, really, uh, they don't, they just use that very, well, they use a lot of it. But their part of it is that small piece along the side. They, they own that piece of it. I'd say they use a lot of it, considering they do, the fact that they, they rent use. that building and generate income off it yes. to use that parking. Yes. The village just has a vested interest in it that residents and non-residents mm -hmm. park there mm -hmm. and everything else. I mean, I don't know, I, I kind of got torn feelings on this as to... No, they do use it a lot. As I said earlier, you know, other entities as well, the Chamber, the Lions Club, the Fourth of July Commission, well, it's their park, but... Um, Any time the community center rents out the building, blood drives. Um. I, I got the cars running. Yeah. I, I'm going to ask you a question now, and please take this in good faith. Is the fire district going to enter into an intergovernmental agreement for the uh, cost and maintenance for the parking lot across the street next to the village hall, or next to the mm -hmm. post office mm -hmm. when the village does that? No. And I know you've said that before as well. But we also aren't going to charge the park in our parking lot. We aren't going to fence it off. Neither are we. we have to no, no, no. It, it's completely open parking, just, just the same. But we just felt that this agreement that was signed <coughs> at time by village officials, by your district officials, was a signed agreement. Yeah, but the way, and I don't know, maybe I'm mistaken this, but the way I understand this is it says that there will be an intergovernmental agreement. This is an agreement as to what to do with, for the donation of the land. And then the way I'm reading it is that there will be an intergovernmental agreement negotiated in the future between the village, the fire district, and the township building commission for the maintenance of making any necessary improvements to the parking lot located. Da, 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 da. That that is this isn't like the negotiation, this isn't the agreement. I understand. And as, as we've said, and as Bob has said too, we don't know if one was ever done. We could never find on 
either the village's part or our part, if they ever follow through with, with, with the plans that were in the beginning. And if I can, to avoid some confusion, you should be looking at a document dated February 11, 2002. Yes. It appears to us that this one superseded the one that was signed in 2001 because of the garage that wasn't going to be built. So back then, they drafted a new agreement. Okay. So these other ones All right. Because I'm sitting there Yeah, the, 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 the fire department, the fire association wanted 50000 instead of the garage. It was a change of heart. But well, we did, we did contribute. Yeah. Fifty thousand dollars to the fire. Yeah, I think we, we paid made those payments, right? Ten thousand a year for five years. Yes. Right. And we made those. Yeah, correct. Was that supposed to be airmarked? Any certain for maintenance or anything? Or I know they bought infrared cameras with some of that money at the time. I don't. It's the whole time, time, I don't remember exactly what it was. Right. Yeah, and then uh, we put up a monument to the firemen in the park. That was another condition, and I believe the Fourth of July paid for that. The firemen's monument out there. Yeah, that was designed and. Dedicated. Mm -hmm. So really the only outstanding piece of the whole puzzle is this paragraph on the third for each. And I, I vaguely remember the community hall board saying we weren't a party to this transfer of land. Why should we be a party to an IGA? That was of course 25 years, 20 years ago at this point. But there was a document that I've seen and we can't find it that actually their name was on it and they were not signed on it. This, this here is probably the most complete document that I have seen because there was one going back. Chief Lujess was here, he had, and he had a document that it didn't include the community hall, but they didn't sign it. Didn't sign it. as far as donating the property? Well, I had an idea. Bob has a different way of doing it. Um, I was of the opinion that whatever the agreement was back then, obviously the fire department is trying to make sure that they can continue what they want to do with that parking lot. I don't think anybody on here disputes that, and I'm sure we can put that in writing as well. We can maybe develop the intergovernment agreement now that doesn't exist. We can create one now. Um, I was on the, I don't quite understand why this arrangement made when, especially now when that, that parking lot is used by everybody. You go from Beach Rec to the 4th of July to anybody that wants to go into beer stand or just sit down and have a picnic to the community hall to the fire department and then anybody else that uses that parking lot. It's more of a public village parking lot than it is a fire department parking lot. And to me it just muddied the waters by doing it the way they did. Understand why. Please don't misunderstand me. And those protections can still be had. Um, I'll give you one example. I think we thought it was a good idea at the time. Is um, we were expecting a lot of rain or whatever the case would be. We decided to put the car back in the parking lot. At that time, we thought it was a good year, good idea to the following year where that whole thing flooded. And I don't think we ever had intention to put it back in the parking lot again. And certainly that may be one of your concerns that can be put here. Um, Bob. I don't know. Well, he suggested that possibly the ownership of it can stay the same and then we could create a lease of some sort uh, to lease the property and, and then just somehow clean this up. To me, this is a, a dirty way of doing things, uh, if you understand what I'm saying. Money in the waters, and I think we could do a much better job. I had thought possibly that if we could fix this parking lot, you know, would the fire department then be turning ownership over to us? So then it clears up. We have the ownership, everybody uses it. Understandably, you want to make sure you have your parking spaces. You know, we want to make sure that uh, your uh, open houses. You know, that's, that's all fine and well. I mean, we, we we agree with that. I'm sure. I don't think anybody here disagrees with that. But then that would clean this all up to me, and I think it's it's better written up that way than it was many many years ago. And times have changed. So that's was my discussion. I, I would assume that if we contribute toward this project, we need some guarantee that that parking lot remains public because under prior administrations there was always a threat that they were going to fence the lot off. Yep. And they would have the legal right to do. <coughs> they, but that's and not that's not a, I know. But 
Yeah. 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 Fall over. That was that was right. That was, yeah. that was back then. That was but what we what we need to do though is 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 if there is a financial arrangement, there has to be some guarantee that that parking lot remains public. And that means everybody, public, not village, not fire district, but public. And if we were going to accept a donation or a dedication of land, that would require a lot of surveying because that parking lot is going to be in and out of lots. I mean, you're probably lots, lots in half. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's going to take a lot of way that agreement is because those lots run east west like that to the, you know, yes, running you east west from the, the south to the north. I mean, you're cutting lots in half. So the other option that, that we it's discussed not like it'd be two of the six lots. Right. It, it's going to be a piece of every one of them. It'd have to be resurveyed and resubdivided, unfortunately. The other option you have is maybe a 99 year lease where he, the, the fire district could lease the property through the IGA to the village. Like we did with the depot, with the realtor. And you don't have to pay a lease fee, you just say in consideration of $10. And the contribution for the payment. I definitely then, feel like we should be responsible to contribute something. I don't know if it's specifically that amount. We should work but, something out. But I also give you the residents that use the parking lot as well. Right. I'm going to give you the bad side of the lease now, or ownership, is that you assume a liability of the parking lot. Not only the future of the pavement, unless there's something in the IG that addresses it, but also anyone that may get hurt on the parking lot becomes your problem, not the fire district's problem. So, we have to consider all that in whatever decision we make. But we need to do something to preserve the future of the parking lot. What that is, I don't know. Does this have to be decided tonight? I know time is of the essence as far as trying to get this done by the end of the year. The only thing is, is you're still missing $44,000. Do we have $44,000? Uh, well, we're what's your plan for the Washington Township? Yeah. Please explain to me your plan on that, Bob. Well, here, here's the problem. Yeah, in my opinion, or Stacy. I mean, if you got a dollar amount that you no, I'm just like to give something, that that I mean, we need to figure out, and discuss, and contribute something because well, the residents well, give us an amount, and then let's try to talk where it would come from. Well, just to give you some background, motor fuel tax is probably an inappropriate use of this money because it's being used on a, on a, another taxing body's property. So I don't think motor fuel would fly. If you use public infrastructure money, uh, there's 267000 there, but you've got to remember the village has to come up with its local match on Penfield, which is going to be 980000 So I'm planning on using every drop of MFT of infrastructure money that we have at that time in 2022. And right now, if you have those two lines up in your treasurer's report, we only got 550 And we need 980 in two years. So whatever we're short, we're going to have to borrow. But we're getting $5 million in road improvements. So for our share. It's the same thing as a levy. Do you have the money now? Yes. What does it cost you? Opportunities down the road. If you spend it now, you're not going to have to spend it later. And that's just so let's say you decide to give them that, that third. That 45 you probably have to borrow in 23 to pay Penfield. That that bill will come due around 2020. I guess my hope with this, this whole IGA was never finished. Um, we've had a really good working relationship with the fire department between us going over there for the police department to do our testing, you guys facilitate over by the public works. Um, but the pace of it, I know you guys are on a time crunch, but the pace of it I'm comfortable with. We don't know where we're getting our money from, and now we're going to have to borrow it potentially now two years later to complete a project. We're hoping to get done this year or last year. I agree with Trustee Missouri that I'd like to contribute something. I just don't know what that dollar amount would be. And even if we came up with a dollar amount, I mean, if we can't do the third, is this still a realistic uh, project for you guys? Well, as I said before, we, we've talked about it. Um, it wasn't in our, our budget to have to redo, you know, um, the entire parking lot. We budgeted like forty-three thousand dollars for just repairs. So uh, we were looking at alternative ways. So do we just pea gravel the parking lot? Do we 
you know, what do we do? But then if the, if the township owns those few parking lot, uh, parking space along one side, do we not touch that and just take out what we have and put pea gravel in there? Uh, we're not quite sure. And, and we, we know that we've come in here and, and brought this in fairly quickly to you. Um, I think it was, it was brought to you guys pretty quickly too. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was. Yeah. There's just it's there's so many unknowns that uh, I'm not comfortable with. We have our entities, all that. Our stuff. board meeting Thursday night, in which we'll discuss this in great more detail. You're always welcome to attend our board meetings as well. But um, if you feel pressured tonight, we're not asking you tonight to say tonight and but we need it shortly. We need some answer very shortly so we can move. Like I said before, the plants close and, and we can't do it this year at all. How, how confident do you think the Washington Township is going to be as far as their third? They I mean, didn't say They didn't give third. us a number. They didn't give us a number. Okay. So we realize we're probably going to have to absorb whatever they're not going to pay okay. as it is. But they, are, they were very willing to contribute something towards us. Total parking spaces are... If this project was done in the plan, how many total parking spaces are there? 56. Okay. Yeah. So, kind of do your math. 56 and this 134. So, how much per parking space? And then, how many parking spaces does the community all have designated to that? Parking spaces come out to about 22, 35 apiece. Um, the community center has 10, which leaves 50 parking spaces. And divided that up. I didn't. 50. I didn't count any of the ones on. Oh, I just counted okay. total number of parking yeah, spaces. Yeah, 18, 18, 10, 10. Correct me if I'm wrong, Joe. We actually added a few spaces from the old block, correct? Which were designed. Yes. So then, what would the community all? If, if they if pay on that, that they would owe uh, let's see, ten spots would be twenty-two thousand three hundred and fifty-one dollars. Ten spots, which leaves fifty remaining, so twenty-five and twenty-five actually would be fifty-five thousand eight hundred and seventy-eight dollars. If we divided up three ways, it would be forty-four thousand seven hundred and two dollars per entity. And this is in addition to the forty you're already going to spend. That doesn't prove that we're putting our own okay. 40 in on top, or 43 on top of that. So we'll be putting in $87,000 right off the bat. Now part of this... What is your 43 cover if this is the whole lot? The 43 was budgeted originally... The grayed out area in the project? In, in the back. It was the north end and then along the... Like, along the okay, that's road. what you got budgeted this year. Yes. That at 43. Yes. Yeah. Gotcha. gotcha. Now, now that is part of the village, right? in the far back. Didn't we give them permission to go into our... Yes, because I was, I, I really wanted to make sure that we kept at least the same number of spaces as before and accommodated their detention requirements that needed for the new station. And that mm -hmm. we were able to accomplish. Mm -hmm. uh, we had to allow them to go into the park a little bit. Uh, that's, if you know where that is, that's where the commissioners used to park years ago in the grass right. along the there. The were there. And, yeah. Right, right. So that's going to be paid now. That's going to be parking area. And that was that was all budgeted into our, our original budget. That amount was put into our budget. In all honesty, the district didn't have to accommodate that. Uh, they had sufficient parking for what they needed. But I, I barked pretty loud wanting to make sure we had the same number of spaces in that block <coughs> for the park. I mean, if any decisions going to need to be made, the, the, the first thing the board's got to decide is how much. I mean, like I said, it's real easy to say, we'd like to give something, but we don't know what. Well, somebody's got to say what, so you can go to the drawing board, and as of tonight, if I'm finance and administration chair, guess who's got to go and find the money? So it's real simple to say, oh, I'd like to give something, but I don't know what. Somebody's got to give some sort of direction if we want to help them out and move them forward. If it's something that's got to be done soon, then, yeah. like I said, somebody's got to sit there and say, we want to do a third, we want to do $500. Well, 
what's it going to be? Somewhere in the middle? Or, I mean, somebody's got to say something. I like the idea better, and I know this stalls it a little bit, is just to meet and say, what what do we have? Where could this money? You know, I mean, I, where are we going to pull it out of? What's it going to do later? I mean, I know you've got ideas off the top of your head, but that is I'm correct. less it's excited about to look at our budget, doing I, it I can tonight. Tell you where we can pull it from, and I don't even I'm not asking you, know. you to tell me where to right. pull it from. I understand I'm asking that. for how much do we want to try to find. Ideally, I would like to find Because if you got it, you, you're going to probably, there's no one place to pull this out of our budget. Right. Mm -hmm. Our budget is tight. We all know it. We sat here and did it. Yeah. We made cuts. Cuts that some people didn't necessarily like. Right? right. Okay, so we know we're tight. So you got to say a dollar a month because as tight as it is, you know it can't come from one spot. Give some sort of direction here as to an amount then. Ideally, I would like to, if we are able to, I would like to do a third because I do feel like our residents use that parking lot a lot. I feel like it is a, a village used parking lot. It's my thoughts. If we can do it, but that's the thing. We need to sit down and see if we can do it. Right. I don't have a budget in front of me. We don't have anything. We can't really properly look at this right now. As far as the uh, past maintenance and everything else, I, I think the parking lot has made it a long time. We know, made an investment in there. What's that? We did, we did an investment in there not long ago, five, six years ago or something. It was before the carnival wrecked it and then you guys did it. And we've always paid to strike it. Every, it the village did not pay the last time it was done. Not the last time. Margie, we've done numerous. Okay, I can pull the receipts. I, well, no, I, can, I can tell you, I, I know we did. Um, I, I remember Matt spraying it, the, the handicaps and that, um, getting that done because we added it to our account. But, um, Marcy, what's your availability this week? Um, your meeting is on uh, Thursday night. Thursday night. I'm available most of the time Wednesday. Tomorrow's my only really bad day. The rest of the week I can get away Thursday if I have to. I'm available tomorrow or Wednesday and I've got availability Friday. Wednesday is terrible for me. What about Friday morning? Or Thursday morning, I'm sorry. Um, Thursday morning is okay. I can make that work. Bob, you'd be able to make that work? Mm -hmm. um, Just give me a time. I can post it too many. Yeah, yeah, because you, you gotta mm -hmm. you gotta have the forty eight hours. Uh, We'll go ahead and try to sit down on Thursday and see where we can. Do you, do you have a time, John? And should, uh, time early, earlier early. the better, so I can get them off. I want, you know, kick it on with my day. Um, yeah, let's do nine. nine. Is nine okay? Or want to go earlier? Eight thirty, eight. Yeah, if we could do like eight eight thirty. That'd be better. Kind of eight o'clock on Thursday. Yeah. Okay. And, yeah. Then, yeah. and then, uh, based on what we can figure out and stuff, obviously we have to then bring it back to our board. I understand. But True. I think our goal would be then to communicate with you guys, whether it be uh, coming to your meeting and give you mm -hmm. an idea of what we're looking at or a simple phone call or something like that. Just communication kind of, with the chief. Some sort of communication yeah. where yes. when you guys go into Thursday night, yes. at least you can kind of have an idea of what we can or can't do for you guys. I, I, I have a question. If you can't afford to do the parking lot, you got this hundred thirty, is it one hundred thirty-four thousand? Mm -hmm. What was your intention? Were you going to borrow that money no. over ten years? No, no, you were going to have to just pay cash for it. No, I think she alluded to the fact that she may not do it at all. May not do it all. And just saw Correct. it right there, area, and leave the rest go. Yeah. Okay. And again, that'll be something. We'll talk about it in more detail. Okay, the reason I ask for that is it's easy to walk right now into the bank and get a real low interest rate for 10 years. You can't, the Miss Valley can't go beyond 10. I don't know what your yeah. rules state. That could be another option if we can't come up with this money, you know, in 30 days, we could borrow it and then have an option to pay it off later on, you know. Can we borrow if we don't own the property? You can't. No, no. It is. They have to borrow right. and then we would pay them an annual fee unless we mutually agree to pay it off. That way if, it, if it's going to affect our cash flow, we would just pay them an annual, like we did with the park, another you know, 10000 a year for five right. years. We do something like that too. And yeah. they'd have to pay the, they'd have to 
to the finance. I, I know the numbers are pretty good. I got a few ideas and I'll talk to us. Okay. okay, got it. We'll see if we can uh, help out any way we can. Okay. Call a special meeting. Mm -hmm. If it's necessary, we can call a special meeting. We'll okay. I think at least if we, Thursday, I mean, I think at least if we, Thursday we give you some sort of answer. And okay. Say, here's what we can and can't do or whatever. It at least gives you guidance to where you can get that. And absolutely, and I that's mean, all we're looking for. By no means we we'll be able to yeah. show up at the check or anything on no, Thursday, no. but no. I mean, we can, no. okay. we can give you a, yeah. a direction to drive the vehicle. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna work. We're gonna work together. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Thanks, thanks for okay. taking the time out. Uh, not needing that for you guys for coming out. Yeah. You want to introduce the new trustee, Mr. Kosh? Huh? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> 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 oh, did you work? Oh, <laughs> Dave Kosh is one of our newer trustees. Um, he filled the vacancy left um, when Trustee Kennedy resigned from our board. Okay. So. Congratulations. Right, Congratulations. 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 <laughs> 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 well, thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. So, what did we find out? Well, we're going to talk about considering a motion authorizing the filing of a formal complaint in Will County Court pertaining to the condition of 752 Penfield. Um, at the time that you know we printed this agenda, the violations were not addressed, um, and we did exhaust repeated efforts to have them comply. Um, I know that recently they said that they would have the work done over the weekend to pictures today. What did they and what didn't they complete? Okay. Like, what are we looking at? If you want to take a look at the pictures, everyone got a handout of the photographs. Uh, you've seen them in the past months. The building uh, appears to be secure. Um, there are structural problems with the building. Uh, that may not be immediate, but would be of concern if I was to occupy the building, they'd probably have to be fixed. Um, I took a picture of each of the walls of the building, <coughs> and I got a little closer in. They did replace the plywood that, that had exposures here. That, that was replaced in painted. However, the one on the second floor, if you turn the page, uh, is still exposed, and I guess you could have birds fly up in there. Uh, that one, probably because they couldn't get to it, because there's no second floor in the building right now, it's just all rafters. Uh, they did fix the door on the side facing Penfield with 2x6 frames to, to hold from garments from getting in, as you can see here in this photograph. But there are other spots in the building where mice and potentially other garments could, could get into the building. Uh, really, there's not, no difference in the, in the condition of the building that I've seen in the last 10, 15 years. Still looks the same. Uh, the property, believe it or not, even though there's piles laying around, is well maintained. There's no weeds, the grass is always mowed and weed whacked. But you have some bricks there, and I assume that he's going to use those bricks in some restoration project down the road. One of the lead, one of the side buildings was removed. You can see here the old pilings and electric cables are still there, but the building is gone. All the other buildings have been secured, but there's still stuff laying around outside. So I don't know why he just didn't put that stuff inside these buildings. But the buildings, the glass has been put in. This one looks like it's open, but there, there are actually, there's actually glass in, the, in those windows, in those openings now. But yet there's still material laying outside. So, I don't know. It's an improvement. It probably has, it looks better now than it probably has in a long time, but it's not hundred percent. Um, can you condemn the building? Eh, I don't know. Uh, the mayor and I were over there this morning and it's really iffy as to whether or not a condemnation would, would suffice. I guess you could submit a formal complaint to the court about the condition of the property itself. I don't think condemnation was ever the goal. No. Yeah. I, I, the goal was always compliance. Compliance. Yeah. Go down mm -hmm. at all. Condemnation doesn't necessarily mean demolition. Yeah, I think you know what my opinion is. Yeah, I'd say just let them. Let, I, mean, I would say send them a. a I mean, any date them with it, but keep sending them a letter. 
The we goal here is compliance, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we don't have to know when you sure talk to them, happened. did they did they say anything about like why they're having barriers or what their plans are? Any any insight at all to their plans? <laughs> but it's been going on for how many? It's years? been going on for 10? 15 years. Yeah. Always, so always, we're going to sell. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. I mean, whatever you ask them, whatever they yeah. say, it's I mean, it's up in there anyways. When was the first instance of this, man? I remember being in the old village hall. 2007 is when they right were before. Yeah. We got elected and there was a vote to uh, condemnation. At that time, my recollection was that the village board didn't realize that if you condemned with the intent of tearing down, you had to pay to tear it down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then that stopped it at that point. But then there was a time where, there was, I think it went back to, I want to say, 09, 10. Wasn't there another push on it? There was. Well, that was when uh, Roman was filled up. And there was a couple of trustees that were, yeah, were assigned to, to keep track of it that went by the wayside. Um, it was I guess always empty promises, letters sent, and each time we pushed, we made progress. Yeah, it so, seems like this is it's so like nudge, think, nudge, step, nudge, step, nudge, yeah, step, nudge, yeah. step. We're a hell of a lot farther than we were years yeah. ago. Time for another nudge, right? More letters. I mean, in all honesty, it would take a couple of guys one day to clean up the back of that property. It wouldn't take that much. No. Meanwhile, it costs us so much every time the attorneys have to send these letters. So exactly. What about just us trying to reach out to them? Have the mayor call them and say, look, we're trying to avoid this at all costs. But I mean, every time we, we have the attorneys do it, right? It costs us money for the attorneys to send a letter. How about we can, you know, we can try that and relay the consensus of the board that we're trying to work with them and so on and so forth. Just I think they can see it too. Yeah, Jonathan, in the right. last two months, I've called them weekly to yeah. get updates on as to how they're making progress. Yeah. And, and, well, you see the end result got some progress, 50% yeah. progress. Yeah. Yeah. We've come a long way. Yeah, I mean, if they've been getting letters for this long, then it'd probably be in person, like a personal visitor call is probably more likely to spur some activity outside of an actual threat of something happening. Yeah, try it. Better than what the options are here. Okay. Can I ask to table this? I mean, we didn't actually make a motion. We were you don't have to table it if you just okay. don't say anything. Yeah, we'll just take it off the agenda until it needs to go back on there again. Um, and plan. the chief and I will work on some things, right? <laughs> okay, and then the um, October 1st. <coughs> is canceled. Um, there's a lack of critical agenda items, um, and it's really not essential to meet without anything to talk about. So we will not be having a meeting on the 27th. That is all I have. Thank you for the safety committee, Trustee Cross. Thank you. Uh, just a reminder of the trick or treat hours are from 2 to 6 p.m. on Saturday, October 31st. IDPH guidelines for this holiday apply. It is up to each parent to decide how to celebrate this year. And um, even that mentioned the newsletter. You want to tell them what, what the new stuff, um, preparation or the tear up that's coming with the newsletters? Yeah, there'll be, there'll be a sheet inside of the village newsletters, an insert that will be something you can rip out of there as suggested by Trustee Caparos. Uh, one side will be orange and it will um, tell people, sorry, see you next year. The other side will be, welcome trick-or-treaters, trick-or-treat here. And each side's got a little happy sign or a sad sign, whether you can trick-or-treat or not. <laughs> and that way, residents can rip it out. They put it in their front door, depending on how they choose to participate. And that will go to all of our residents uh, once it's mailed, once the newsletter's mailed, and that should be sometime this week. Plus. It will also be on our village website if they want to print it out themselves. We can share it on Facebook in case they don't get the newsletter. Yeah, I mean, every way we can get it out. Yeah, I think that's yeah. Right. yeah, that's a good idea. I know another village was doing that, too. Yeah. I thought that was a great idea. idea. Yeah, we were going to do that originally just on our, our website, but then it came up as an idea for the newsletter, and it was great timing. So, yeah, it was a good idea. Thank you. That's all I have. Well, of course, you may trust people. Uh, consider a motion to reletting bids for the replacement of the Gould Street water main. Uh, the state grant requirements make us rebid this job. 
uh, that was last bid out in June of 19. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to consider a bid award for November. Uh, this may push back construction to early 2021. Uh, this is with the grant that we had and then it was done. We had the bids and whatever. Now we got it with the capital money. Um, so do we need to... The motion we, we, we can't just to relet bids. Relet bids. We can't reject bids that are stale anyway. Yes, they went stale. So all we have to do is make a motion for reletting. Okay. So I'll, I'll go ahead and, and make a motion to relet bids for the replacement of the Gold Street bottom name. I'll motion. second it. Motion and a second. Any questions? Roll call. resolution uh, of application to the IDOT for the Illinois Transportation Enhancement Funds uh, install fill that it would be to install uh, infill sidewalks in all the new subdivisions. Uh, we had previously submitted for this under a Safe Routes to School grant. Uh, here it is available, I, I talked about this last month, uh, through the uh, ITEH, uh, right? ITEP. 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 Uh, so if this doesn't work, we still have the option for Safe Routes to School, which will be after this, but uh, the thought is to go ahead and, and make an application for this one. So there's no questions. Uh, we got a resolution number, Mayor? 2018. 2020-18. Uh, I'll go ahead and make a motion uh, approving resolution 2018 for the application to IDOT for the Illinois Transportation Enhancement uh, program for funds to install infill sidewalks and other new subdivisions in the building. Motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. Is there a second? Any questions? Roll call. Missouri? Yes. Musician? Yes. Whaling? Yes. Caparos? Yes. Meyer? Yes. Krauss? Yes. Uh, status, of, status of brush pickup and leaf collection. Uh, brush pickup, I believe, Matt, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, we're up to speed. We're caught up again. Yeah, after, will, yeah, after our two-week hiatus, we were able to catch up today. Um, it seems like a lot of people are transitioning over from brush to leaves now. I know the leaves are starting to pile up. Um, we are getting our leaf box on our first truck tomorrow and our second one probably on Wednesday. Um, we'll be, we will be on the road collecting leaves on Wednesday. Excellent. So. Well, there's no uh, questions. That concludes my report. I could have a couple of Fall 2020 newsletter, was that mailed? Uh, it is still to printers, it'll be mailed this week. Okay, will be mailed this week, and we will get copies when they're mailed. Um, the village hosted the annual TIF Joint Review Board meeting. The minutes are enclosed for your review, and no major concerns were raised at the meeting. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to thank Matt for the expediency of getting that blue line painted on Penfield. Yep, thank you. no problem. Looks great too. Yeah, mm -hmm. Great idea. Mm -hmm. Great yeah. idea, Tom. Any other old business? On our new business, I got a couple things. Um, don't faint. Bob and I have had two conversations with Waltz. Uh, we have agreed, but it has not been followed up with a letter yet to a 50% reduction. So, Bob, the numbers would be then 45,000. Say. What was that number? 45,000. Yeah, we owe 90,000. Oh, that's Isn't that something? Now, 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 wait, 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 by a police car that we committed to last month. So, well, we committed to it, granted that those funds were available. Correct. That was part of the motion, correct? And I, I'm only a, I'm only like, about, didn't we specify that, that that was like, yeah, yeah if, if we got all the grant money in, yes. But I, I am committed to funding that squad car. I, yeah. I just think we do need it. Uh, it's for the officers. We, I, Chief's made a convincing argument to me that you don't want to bring that up over the fire district. No. No, I'm bringing it up now, right? Yeah. Yeah, but. Well, last time we talked. You we didn't want to bring the waltz up now, no. No, no. 
the, 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 the last time we talked, you said you don't need fifteen thousand of that forty-five thousand. Has that changed? Excuse me. The last time we talked, you only need fifteen thousand of that. That's about what I need, correct? Fifteen thousand of it, so you still have thirty thousand. Yeah, well, we can. We'll, we'll that's a moving target. We'll discuss. Yeah, we're meeting Thursday. Yeah. That's that's great news for us. That's yeah, it is. Well that's done. What, what is the waltz money? It was it was a team effort. <laughs> He's so, asking about Waltz. Thank you, Waltz. Yeah. He, he wants a thank you. background on Waltz. Yeah, what's no, the background? No, Trustee Zesh wants the background on that. But, uh, I didn't hear that. Okay. Is this a dangerous question? <laughs> no. No, no, no. no. So, years ago, it's a lovely question. When the plaza was being built, you have to help me out, there was a deal made that if Waltz or Knutz at the time mm -hmm. decided to build, whatever the case may be, that we would rebate some of their tax dollars. That's what this is, but it was a 20-year rebate, if I remember right. It actually was set up as a sales tax tip, so anything over the baseline when the grocery store relocated was reimbursed to them. And at the time, Which the was thought was thousand. that if they ever doubled in sales, another grocery store would come in and compete. So they would never really get a lot. No one ever assumed that Canute would sell to a bigger grocery chain, and that's what happened. Um, so we're returning about 130000 a year to Waltz and sales tax incentives. For 20 years. Over 20 years. Then we're uh, this is the last year, by the way. Then the pandemic hit, so the board asked, could we ask Waltz if they would consider, you know, returning some of that money in this last year, because it's a terrible year for us on the books. Mm -hmm. And it's a great year for them. Excellent year for them. Did so we, we asked. They did follow up with the mayor, and they made this commitment. So we're waiting to get it in writing. The uh, very Paul Agassi was the gentleman that we spoke to on the phone, and uh, he was very uh, community minded, community spirit, uh, so on and so forth. So I, I, I applaud him. Uh, and like I say, all we're now is waiting for the letter. Uh, another positive note in the conversation, if you remember, Ben, you may not know this. I don't know if Stacy does. Waltz was supposed to expand to the north. Right. Mm -hmm. Everything was approved and they never built. He told me that down off the table. That still was a possibility. Now, who knows? Yeah, he'd have to go through the process again because that's special use. Yeah, it's been a while. Since the garage and I've been a long time. Yeah. 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 One, other, one other thing, um, like the vacancy on the village board, which is the mayor's prerogative, uh, there's also a vacancy on the planning and zoning board. That I think I will not fill that. We're not really doing anything on the planning and zoning board, so I think I'll leave that vacancy until after the election. Just to keep everybody informed. If something does come up where uh, we get something real big that we feel that we need that other person on the board, I certainly can appoint them at that particular point in time. Any other new business coming? Yeah, we got something. Uh, everyone should have a, a, oh, yeah. a proposal for a, a gear in front of them. Uh, we received a check from the insurance company from the accident with the gator. Uh, whatever, just in, in the spirit of this being over a $5,000 purchase, I wanted to bring it to the board's attention. Um, and just so everybody understands, the amount that we're going to purchase this gator for at $73,449.16 is uh, the, the insurance being covered at. And, and then a little bit. So, um, the, the we want the consensus of the board to purchase the new equipment to go ahead and it's over five grand. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, it, it, as long as everybody's good with it, I mean, the department needs a new gator. That one's trash. So, um, <laughs> give Matt the, the thumbs up. Matt, go ahead and cool. let it rip. All right. Uh, that, that's all I got there. I got, I got one, and just we don't have to decide tonight, but in, in January, the third Monday, is Martin Luther King Day. So if we're going to continue with the third Mondays, we're already set up to do November and December. January, that could be a problem. So think of an alternative date. We can't push that meeting too much further back because we'll start paying interest on our bills. So what about Tuesday? Like Tuesday would night? work. The following night would work. But we'll have to decide tonight. Think about it. Look at your calendars. And by December, we'll have to make a decision. Didn't we just do the once a month through December? Or? That's correct. Okay. So we're going to have to extend it anyway, but just bear in mind, January could be a problem, and February's a problem. I think President's Day is also the third Monday. We don't, well, we don't have to extend it. It'll be up to us whether we extend No. Correct. This My is you guys thought was January we try to return back to normal. And it is. February is also. Any other new business? 